Mini episode 1372 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by Sportsology, delivering unconventional columns and webcasts about sports, TV, music, movies, and more. Follow them on the web at sportsology.com. The FDH Lounge. You want to schedule your life around it. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. This is FDH Lounge original dignitary Rick Morris, along with my close personal friend, fellow original dignitary Chris Galloway. We are going through in this series the NFL division by division, doing our previews as we've done the last couple of years here on the show. And we are up to the last of them, the eighth of the eight divisions we're going through, the NFC West. The first one that we did, the AFC East, If you look at it, if you're looking for any kind of a macro-level overview of the season, of some of the issues that the teams and the league are going to face this year, whether it be the COVID landscape, the uh, 17-game schedule with 18 weeks, anything like that, more or less the first half of the first segment that we did, if you want to hear any of that stuff. The rest of these ones here, we're pretty much tightly focusing on the divisions, and uh, my bottom line for each division comes from Fantasy Football Draftology 2021, available on the main page at fantasydrafthelp.com and the fdhlounge.com. I have a segment in there called One Run-On Sentence for Each Team. So we're going through each division. I'm spitting those out there, and then Chris and I are kind of picking the bones of whatever's left to talk about in each division. So for the NFC West, the team that I have picked in first place here, uh, which a lot of people might not be thinking, although they seem to be a little bit more of a popular pick recently than they were a couple months ago. I have San Francisco in first, and here is my run-on sentence for them. The title contender that most are ignoring returns the legions of injured players, feeling a pinch only in the secondary as Jimmy G tries to make it difficult for the 49ers to replace him with potentially a second Super Bowl appearance in three years. Arizona, a team with more youth than you'd ideally want in areas of key talent, a shaky at best running game, and questions at guard and cornerback still may not be enough to keep the Cardinals out of the playoffs in a weak NFC field. The LA Rams, a team whose great defense was picked over in the offseason, was already overhyped even before the Cam Akers injury and is now just a borderline playoff contender. Seattle, Russell Wilson is completely justified in any skepticism that he may feel about this roster, with linebacker the only position group on defense up to snuff, an offensive line that's been horrible since grunge music was in fashion, depth issues at running back, and a complete sinkhole at tight end. And uh, Chris, just to elaborate further on Seattle, uh, it's an interesting thing here that the two real Mike Holmgren legacy franchises in the NFL. I mean, I know he was in San Francisco as an O coordinator in, in, in some of their glory years, but really Green Bay and Seattle are the two franchises what you think of when you think of Mike Holmgren. And coincidentally, Russell Wilson, I think, staring down the barrel of the same issues Aaron Rodgers has in terms of support in Green Bay. Russell Wilson has gone completely full circle in his career from I never felt like early in his career he was being carried by the rest of the team. I never believed that. I always believed that he was uh, certainly doing his part and and doing what was necessary and executing. But it was the rest of the team, the Legion of Boom, and some of the other things uh, on this team that were able to kind of pave the way for him to the point where he is now being weighed down by the rest of the roster. He's come full circle in in a completely bad way for him. Uh, I agree with that. Uh, um, but let me start off by saying that I absolutely love the NFC West. Um, this is the most competitive division. This has got the most talent top to bottom. Um, and and it, it is going to be just so much fun to watch these teams compete week in and week out. I think fans of football, fans of the NFL just have to be salivating over um, what we're going to see out of the NFC West this year and, and how these teams will 
probably in some ways beat each other up, but um, I think they'll all do well outside of their division. Um, I have the order a little different than you, though. I do have Seattle making the playoffs mm. because of Russell Wilson, despite all the other issues. He is a lot like Aaron Rodgers in my mind, that he just elevates um, uh, you know, the, the shit around him right. and makes them makes them far better than they could be without him. Right. And so I have them uh, sneaking in um, as the number three team in the NFC West and finishing and getting in as the seventh seed in the playoffs. Um, I, I just I have Arizona last in this division because they are too young, too many holes. I don't believe in their head coach. And I don't believe in their run game. And I just I, I just feel like they're just an undisciplined franchise and a team at this point. And um, you know, where's you know, where's Chandler Jones and he he wants out. Um and you know, is he gonna force his way out or is he gonna cooperate for one more year? I don't know. But that's never good in the locker room. So I think Arizona is the team that competes to the end of the year just like last year and misses out of the playoffs. Um, and that's going to be a question mark about what do they do with their GM and coach after the season, if that's the case yet again. Um, I have the Rams in second place. Um, everything you said is true. The defense is picked over. Cam Akers has gone down. McVay is going to have to get creative. Uh, I don't think they really upgraded a lot at, at, at quarterback. I think in one way they upgraded in terms of if you asked me, and I you know this will offend you and I apologize, <laughs> if you ask me who do you want a quarterback, Stafford or Goff, I would take Stafford. Um, but I also don't think of Matt Stafford as a winner. I, I've never understood how he, he takes – he ends up with no blame for the poor performance of Detroit on all those years he's been there. Right. Or he was there. Um, I just I just don't believe in Matt Stafford as a winner, um, although I do believe in Sean McVay. I do believe um, they still have enough talent on this team to compete and to win enough games to get into the playoffs. I actually have them overachieving a little bit, uh, and, 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 and spoiler alert, ending up as the five seed. Mm. Um, and then uh, um, San Francisco. I agree with you on San Francisco, hundred uh, percent. This it is they're going to win the division. I, they have the best roster in that division, top to bottom. Uh, they have the most talent, and if it's healthy, I, I believe there's there's no reason they can't get back to the Super Bowl with Jimmy G. Now look, everybody's excited about Trey Lance. That kid is not ready to play. Yet he's not there, despite all the hype and all the crazy. Um, I think they're going to do the smart thing and stick with Jimmy G as long as he's healthy. And if he can stay healthy, he has shown that he can take this team to the Super Bowl. Um, and I think they are going to excel. They're going to win the West based on the absolute depth of that of that team and and Trey Lance. Barring, you know, maybe some spots here and there because if Jimmy gets banged up, um, it's going to be Jimmy's team and Trey Lance is going to hold the clipboard and he's going to learn. And it's going to be a lot like the Alex Smith, uh, you know, Pat Patrick Mahomes situation. Everybody forgets that, you know, that, that year that Patrick Mahomes, his first year in the league, he only started the last game of the season. Uh, and Alex Smith had a great year. Right. Um, now, they didn't get to the Super Bowl, but... You know, I don't think that that was necessarily because of Alex Smith, um, you know, but he had a great year. And I think you're going to see something similar in San Francisco. I think you're going to see Jimmy have a really good year. And I think you're going to see San Francisco go deep. Uh, spoiler alert. And, and, and then I think they're going to move off of him. They're going to move Jimmy in the offseason. They're going to get something for a guy that performed well this year. And they're going to move to the kid next year. Um, but his time is not now, uh, as long as Jimmy's as long as Jimmy's healthy. Well, you know, I, I kind of agree with what you're saying about that. I, I think that's the situation they're going to be in. I think they're going to have a strong year, but I think again they're going to move on from him in the end because of the upside of Lance. Let me play a little bit of devil's. Well, they have to. Yeah. I mean, look what they gave up to get him. Right. 
I mean, they don't have a choice. Right. I mean, you can't give up all, you know, all that draft capital and basically tell the world, this is our guy. Well, you're literally spitting in the face of the guy that got you to the Super Bowl two years ago. Right. Um, you know, they're going to squeeze one more year out of Jimmy while they try to get Trey ready to go. But, I mean, they don't have a choice. When, however this year goes, they're moving off Jimmy. Even if they, you know, let's say they win the freaking Super Bowl, all right, they're moving off of Jimmy. So, uh, I it's, agree. it's done. It's well, done. Not only that, you're in a position where, Imagine looking at the value you can get for the the quarterback that just you, you won the Super Bowl with him. You know what I mean? Like they, they could be in an all time position for being able to leverage that. Uh, yeah, they're and, gonna get back the picks they gave up to go get Trey Lance. Oh my God, that would be that the rich get richer, huh? I mean, which by the way, speaking of moving picks here, and I I agree uh, with with what you're saying about uh, the, the the Rams. Although again, I disagree about uh, Stafford being an upgrade about uh, over uh, Jared Goff. But in terms of what the Rams keep doing, if you've looked at this over the last, I think going back several years and moving ahead several years, the number of times that they've had their first round pick has been pretty minimal. We have a Ted Steffian rule in the NBA. Are we going to need a Georgia Frontieri rule in the NFL? To where teams can't trade number one picks in consecutive years. The Rams seem to be pushing for that rule to come in. <laughs> you're not going to see it. You don't think so? Um, okay. You're not, not going <laughs> to see it. All right. At some point, LA will, will keep their, their pick. <laughs> um, but they'll keep it if something were to go terribly wrong, say this year, Stafford gets hurt. And they, right. They bottom out and go four and, you know, four and 13. Um, they'll keep that pick. Uh, but to, I mean, to your point, they clearly have a philosophy. They want proven talent. And they're willing to give up the if come for proven talent. And, and, and they're not the only ones that, that have that philosophy. The Eagles have had that re- in recent years. Um, the Patriots have had that from time to time. So, um, you know, it's, it's not surprising that they're telling you what they're about. And, and you know, whether it's, it's trading out all lots of picks to go get Jalen Ramsey, it's they want proven talent. And they're willing to give up the if come of those picks to get, to get guys that are proven. Um, and look, they're, you know, they're winning under that philosophy. Now, does, it, does the rooster come home to roost there at some point? You know, I don't know. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I think they've got another they've got another playoff run in them this year. Although I do think the cupboard is getting a little more bare. Well, you know, in looking at this, and again, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm looking it up as we're talking here whether or not the uh, yeah um, the Rams don't have their pick next year anyways. Uh, so they've given <laughs> it up in the trade. So if they bottom out this year, it's not enough. I, I kind of felt like, as you were saying there, if the Rams had their own pick, I was put in mind of, I don't know what sport you would do it in. Football might work the best, but I guess you could do it in basketball or another sport. Isn't there a dark comedy movie out there getting ready to be written by somebody of where one team holds another team's number one pick and does all these things to surreptitiously sabotage them over the year so it ends up being a very high pick? Somebody's got to write that one. Well, it sounds like you. You sounds like you've just pitched a script. <laughs> <laughs> the kind of thing I don't generally do on the show, and more so behind the scenes. Yes, uh, that, might, that might be an idea. Who knows? Uh, we'll let somebody steal it from me now, and you know, crank out a really good version of it. I want to play a little bit of devil's advocate with you here on the divisions because, to me, it's a very, very interesting question right now of which division is better if it is the AFC North or if it is the NFC West. And in looking at this here, uh, you could go back and forth on it, really, with that call. Uh, how would you uh, slate it as far as, I mean, well, you, you appear to be saying the NFC West, so I would so- somewhat lean towards the AFC North, tell, uh, because I, I think that uh, top to bottom it is just a little bit stronger, and there are two potential Super Bowl contenders in the AFC North. Tell me why you think it would be the West rather than the uh, AFC North. I, I think that you've, you're, you you are actually slightly top heavy in the AFC North and Cleveland, and Baltimore, whereas in the NFC West, um, I think you're going to have three teams in the playoffs. And I, I mean, I look at it like this, you know, who who do you believe in more? So let, let's 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 just play this. 
Um, do you believe in uh, Do you believe in Seattle or Pittsburgh more? I know you had Pittsburgh at the bottom of the AFC North. Who do you? Which team do you like better, Seattle or Pittsburgh? Honestly, Pittsburgh because of their defense. I have Seattle with a better record, but that's partially because I think the AFC North is a little bit stronger. I'm going to say Pittsburgh because of the defense, but just by a narrow sliver. Okay, and then, um, and then, uh, so Arizona. I, I think you would have Arizona over Cincinnati. Probably, yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen. I think they're close. I think I just give a slight nod to the NFC West, only because I think the bottom in in, in Seattle and Arizona um, are slightly better than Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. That's it. I, I will That's say, it. and I would say Baltimore's pretty much uh, a lot like the Rams, right? I think those two teams are actually a lot alike. Baltimore's defense isn't what it was, despite right. everybody sort of pretending it's not. Right? You know, they lost a couple guys on the line. Um, their quarterback, again, it's it's it remains to be seen if he can win throwing the football. Um, I, I think the Rams and Baltimore are actually a lot more alike than, than people want to acknowledge. And I think that Baltimore gets a, a bit of a, 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 a you know, a, sort of a, a, a pump in the reputation because they've been able to feast on what was historically two terrible franchises in Cleveland, Cincinnati in the last couple of years. Um, and so therefore, you know, it inflated their record. And, uh, you know, so they look like they're stronger uh, than, than than the Rams. But I think those two teams are very, very similar. And I think the Browns and the, and the 49ers are very similar. So I just I just give the slightest nod of of Seattle and Arizona over uh, Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. The one so that... I give I give the slight advantage NFC West just okay. ever so slight. Okay, yeah, and uh, I, I know we both agree that those are collectively probably uh, the, the two best divisions here. I mean, here at we're splitting hairs. Yeah, right? yeah, I mean, I, mean they're, they're... I think that I think that two teams come out of the AFC North, I think three end up coming out of the NFC West because the NFC is so much weaker um, in general. So I think they end sure. up getting three, and the AFC North actually only ends up with two. I, and that's really is the difference maker. Yes, I, I have it being three teams as well. I have Seattle at eight and nine. The next two teams, both as wild card teams, the Rams and Arizona at nine and eight, and I have San Francisco at eleven and six as the division winners. And just to bring it full circle here, in terms of what you were saying about all the games in the division and what each one of them is going to mean, what I will tell you, Chris, my way of showing how much I agree with that is. As I re- reference back uh, fantasy football draftology yet again, uh, the FDH top games of the 2021 NFL season. I went through and I ranked them in my estimation what the, the, the best, most exciting games of the year were going to be. And I have a 12-way tie for 19th place. It is every game in the NFC West. because, And that's the only division I would say that about. There are teams where I do think, you know, like my, my tie for sixth place is Cleveland at Baltimore, Baltimore at Cleveland. Uh, but, but rarely am I going to say that, uh, and I'm not going to say that about any teams more than two teams playing each other, but this grid of every team in the NFC West playing each other in the NFC West this year, as they do every year, of course, but that collectively to me is my tie for 19th place on all of the games of the season just because of, like you said, how tightly matched up a lot of these teams are. Uh, the excitement, the passion that is there in those competitive games. And uh, I think I agree with what you said about how it's going to be a treat to watch each and every one of them. Yeah, I can't wait. I, I, I think you're, you're spot on in what you're saying there. Um, they're going to be competitive. They're going to have storylines. They're going to, it's just, it's going to be good watching all season long, watching that division um, compete. I, I just think you've got, you've got four teams with a lot of talent and, and at the end of the day, that's what people like to watch, right? Yes. So when you talk about games, right? Yes. Um, and quality of games, it's it's about watching talent. Yes. Um, I mean, God knows through history, and, you know, and, and sports and football. I mean, there are you know there are boring teams that you don't want to watch, right? Right. I mean those 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 Tim Duncan Spurs teams were 
fantastic, but it was not must see TV. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. And so um, I think the NFC West is must see TV this year. And um, I think you're spot on in your analysis. Yes. And hopefully as many of those games as possible are going to be either nationally covered or in the prime uh, national 430 uh, time spot uh, there to where shown to most of the country because as many of those 12 games as possible deserve to be seen by all of us because uh, if you're just looking at around the loop in a division, that's as good as it gets this year for the quality of games. Typically, in other years, what we've done is when we get to the end of the NFC West, we extend the segment and uh, go on and make our overall playoff picks. But per your excellent suggestion, Chris Galloway, we're not going to do that. We're going to come back for one more bonus segment here. Uh, this is uh, nine for the price of eight, if you will, this year. We're going to come back in the next segment here, and we're going to give you our playoff picks all the way through in the AFC, the NFC, and how we see the Super Bowl playing out. Spoiler alert, I think we both expect to be very happy boys at the end of it all in February, but uh, how we get from here to there, we'll cover that in the next segment. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this segment on the NFC West, and thank you, Chris Galloway, for another outstanding one here in the FD.